Here at the State College of Florida, we're developing a model for healthcare delivery that will truly transform care at the bedside. Our model is building on working in partnership with our medical college, our local medical college of Lake Erie uh, College of Osteopathic Medicine. And we've also partnered with GE Healthcare to bring in the technologies of their nurse call communication system. I think it's very important that the, the, the doctors and the nurses of tomorrow work with real technology that is being deployed in the various hospitals. So we feel this is an excellent opportunity to work with other professionals in a simulated center with a simulated patient and they can get experience of how they interact, how they uh, establish communication, and can they establish a line of communication and trust among each other. Okay, as we talked about with the assessment earlier, I'm concerned because his heart rate is high and his, his blood pressure is, is really tanked. Um, he's got some hematuria. Okay. I just don't see an improvement here. Zach, you hear me? This gives a simulation into what the real world will be like, and they'll be in that, you know, within four to six months, they'll be in a real live situation. Regular rate and rhythm, bilateral breath sounds, decreased bowel sounds in all four quadrants. Well, usually it's been one where the student follows the attending physician and they observe more than actually having a uh, hands-on or, you know, participating. So we feel this is uh, something that uh, participating is important, especially with other professionals. How are they going to communicate not only to the attending physician they're working with, but the professional staff, the nursing staff. And we emphasize that this is not only just for their training for their clinical years, but their practice years. And you consider that we're building a model to transform care at the bedside and using the novice to expert model. These young nurses, nursing students, and, and physician uh, students, medical students, come together in teams to work at the bedside in, in real life situations. We mimic those situations in our simulation center. So they admitted him through the ER. I give a brief description of the patient, but I bring him in, introduce him to the professional nurse that's caring for the patient in ICU patient. They have to get the report from that professional person. Then they have to do their own physical assessment of that patient. There's no significant medical health history and no surgical history. You will note when you uh, look at the simulation center or if you visit there that it, it is the format of a hospital setting and it looks just like an ICU, if you will. And so we're able to simulate those experiences for the students, not only the emergency experiences that they might would see, but also real day-to-day -day occurrences. Yeah, go over. All right, thank you, okay, Dr. Okay, we'll see you. You guys ready to go meet Mr. Harmon? All right, right this way. Well, it looks like we got contact precaution, so let's stop here and gown up. So as a novice, the young nurse and the medical student come together, and they practice those scenarios. They learn a common language. They learn how to respect each other's knowledge, how to work within a team. And then they, and when they get out into the hospital, they really can be what we would consider to be experts. They're confident in their abilities, they're competent and they're caring. And that's truly what we're trying to get across for the care of our patient in our community. I'm Mr. Harmon, my name's Dr. Hotz, and these are my medical students, and we're here to take a look at you today. Hi, I'm Linda. I'm taking care of Mr. Herman today. I just uh, have instructed him not to speak because every time he talks, he gets so short of breath. That okay. The difference that we're doing here is we're bringing them together for their training. We're trying to build um, interdisciplinary teams because we know that the patient uh, safety and quality care and the outcomes for the patient will be much better if the nurses and the doctors learn to work together collaboratively in a team, all for the good of the patient. It's important that they understand the dynamics of what's going on, not only with the patient themselves, the family, the professional, other professionals caring for that patient. So they have to take a look at the total 
uh, environment for the patient. Um, it's just not going to work. Um, so we're thinking now. What happens in simulation when we have patient scenarios, we're able to, to include that therapeutic communication as well as the humanistic touch. Patients that we see in the hospital, they're scared, they're very frightened, they're not sure what's going on, and we need our students to be able to convey that therapeutic, humanistic, caring ability. His grandmother and mother are both in the waiting room. They're quite um, upset. We need to speak to them now. Oh, okay. And by just a simple touch, a simple explanation can alleviate a lot of our patients' fears and anxieties. Oh my God. He's lost a lot of good. blood. Yeah. But right now he's being transfused. Oh my God. I want to see him. Can I see him? Of course you can see him. One of the things I think is important is to see how they respond to a critical situation without any previous script of what's going to happen. It essentially, is how they think on their feet. Do they respond well? Can they handle a situation? Because that's going to be important because there's going to be a hundred things crop up in their training or practice that they're never going to be prepared for. This is a good thing for them to get experience in handling a difficult situation. We're going to look at her family situation, her home situation, okay. what resources you have available to you at home. Okay. Well, my, my dad just passed away recently. Yeah, and you so just moved, moved in because moved you, got got this, you, you got this, you got this, you got the divorce. Let's focus, let's focus on Lorraine. I don't want to hear, I'm sorry, Lorraine. I don't know. Stress. Let's focus on Lorraine right now. And then we'll find out what exactly is going on and what's right. best for her. Okay. Can we see? you also do video feedback of the entire scenario which they get to see themselves, they get to see their body language, and they get to you know, have suggestions from the professional staff of how maybe they could have done it better. Hi, time out on the scenario there, you guys. We want to share a safety moment. Technology right has changed from the early days of the nurse call button where you would go into the hospital and you would hear the ding, 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 and that was the, the call, oh, well, a nurse needs to come and see what the, or answer the patient's call, many times overhead, maybe sometimes verbally, but you would always hear the ringing of the call bell. The G nurse call, the intelligence nurse call system, actually brings several technologies together to really provide this improvement in clinical workflow and to improve the patient satisfaction. Okay. I'm really having a lot of chest pain. Are you going to do anything for Yes, that? we're going to give you some pain medications, get another EKG, and see what happens after that. I can order it from here. Thank you. We still have the ringing of the call bell, but they are much more sophisticated today. Different lights signify different things going on in situations that might be going on at the patient bedside. They can not only see that the patient needs some help, but they can also understand, you know, is there some periodic follow-up that they need to do and it saves on, on extra workflow. It helps us to manage the workflow in the hospital setting to be so that the nurses can spend more time at the bedside providing that quality care. And so having these technologies available and having the student nurses and, and medical students work with these technologies helps them to see how these technologies truly do protect the patient and uh, enhances, if you will, their ability to provide that care. Good, quality, competent communication at the bedside will save lives.